Welcome to an educational video presented by the Pastiche Distance Learning Program. Hello, my name is Florence. I'm the course developer for all of the Pastiche Education Programs. This lecture is part of our Cosmetic Chemistry Specialty Classes and based on the principles of corneotherapy. And today we are discussing the subject of preservatives and asking the question, can the packaging of cosmetics reduce the need for preservatives? Skin conditions and disorders commonly seen in clinics today all seem to have one common denominator. They all suffer from barrier disorders that may be as simple as essential fatty acid deficiency through to the more challenging to treat rosacea. We have learnt in recent years how the washout effect of essential skin lipids caused by common anionic and cationic emulsifiers are contributing to this increase in barrier disordered skin. There has always been a movement towards skin care products that have fewer chemicals, that is fragrance and preservative free, and do not aggravate sensitive skin. Are we any closer to achieving this? A variety of microorganisms, including yeasts, fungi, yeast and mould, and bacteria, including pseudomonas, staphylococci and streptococcus, can cause problems with cosmetic preparations over time. Contamination of formulations can lead to separation of emulsions, product discoloration, the formation of gases and odours, as well as the infection of the skin of the user. Preservatives have a microbicidal or microbiostatic effect on bacteria, yeasts, and mould. Microorganisms do not only threaten the shelf life of a product. When they reproduce, they may be a severe risk to the consumer's health. Health and safety regulations consequently mandate protection for the consumer. Preservatives are not only in our skincare, makeup, and toiletries, but also in our food and medications. We are exposed to chemicals such as preservatives on a broader scale than we would like to think. Problems with preservative failure in cosmetics can be related to one or more of the following. Expiry of usable shelf life. Extreme temperature variation during storage. Incorrect storage conditions. Incorrect application and usage. Personal care products usually stored in bathrooms contain preservatives to protect against the fungus that inhabits warm, damp environments. When one considers the way face creams, masks, eye creams and sun protection is applied and stored, then it is easy to understand the need for preservatives. If the end user were as careful about application methods and storage as the skin treatment therapist is in the clinic, the percentage of preservatives and personal care products could be reduced. However, this is not the case, and as long as fingers are used to dispense and apply creams, lids are left off containers, products are left unprotected in light, air and water, there is a need for preservatives. We know that any cosmetic or personal care product that is genuinely preservative-free will still usually carry antioxidants as the preservative ingredients. However, when a product carries the marketing words fragrance-free or preservative-free, they have a higher quality and purity of raw materials, and the manufacturing plant may, or should have, practiced aseptic manufacturing. The term aseptic is defined as preventing infection, free or freed from pathogenic microorganisms. The methods involved are the most demanding of pharmaceutical manufacturing processes. It requires precise attention to operator training and behaviour, process validation, production process documentation, plant and equipment maintenance, and changes control management. Cosmetics claiming the aseptically manufactured certification require the formulations to be produced under the most stringent guidelines to prevent any contamination at any time before, during and after the manufacturing process. The combination of aseptic manufacturing and totally sealed packaging relieves the demand for preservatives, as it minimises the potential for contamination. As you can imagine, adherence to such meticulous processes requires investment in both training and specialised facilities. 
and is reflected in the cost of the product. Many ingenious types of packaging have also been developed to reduce cross-contamination and reduce the need for large quantities of preservatives. However, this innovative and new packaging also comes with a cost. Preservatives are indispensable whenever a cosmetic product contains water. Without water, microorganisms can neither reproduce nor live. Pure oils and lipids perhaps require antioxidants to prevent rancidity, but no preservatives. Packing in jars involves higher germ contamination during the application of the product than with a tube or dispenser packaging. Thus, jar products contain a higher reserve of inhibitors. Furthermore, jar products involve another phenomenon that is quite disagreeable. Changes in temperature that happen, for example, when stored in the bathroom, may involve condensation residues in the lid. These water residues are an ideal precondition for the growth of germs, due to the presence of traces of inorganic substances. Hair, grit, skin cells and general debris also accumulate around the inside of the lid, to become a breeding ground for bacteria. The packaging in airless dispensers avoids the specific problem, as they have a second bottom part that automatically moves up while emptying the receptacle and thus prevents air from penetrating. The packaging of preservative-free cosmetics would ideally be in airtight pump containers. This type of packaging would ensure that the risk of oxidation is prevented or reduced. Depending on the material, tubes pose different conditions. The aluminium tube with its creases makes a pretty poor optical impression. Its use, however, is very hygienic because it is impossible that germ-contaminated air penetrates while emptying the tube. Plastic tubes have the disadvantage of resuming their former shape when emptying, which means that they suck in external air into their interior and together with it, germs. From the hygienic and the visually attractive standpoint, as well as regarding the lowest possible dose of preservatives, airless dispensers are becoming the future number one packaging material for dermological and cosmetic products. There is a common denominator among skins that show an adverse reaction to a product, and most often it is not the product that is at fault. It is generally due to the compromised condition of the skin, and would include a loss or reduction in the first line of skin barrier defense, the acid mantle. Skin that has lost the protective flora and the emollient and occlusive action of the acid mantle exhibit the hot, itchy, burning signs of eczema and allergic contact dermatitis. Also, the next two lines of skin barrier defense, multilamellar lipid and corneocyte structure, may be compromised leaving the interior of skin susceptible to outside pathogens and allergens. It is not uncommon for clients with skin irritations to be unaware that it is the condition of their products that can be the cause of their skin disorder. Clients may be unaware that because of poor storage and usage practices, the product has become unusable from a safety standpoint and is harboring bacteria. Always check the client's products during the consultation, with particular attention to the state of seals on the packaging and the conditions of storage, and, of course, the use-by date. Preservatives in cosmetics are usually only in quantities to protect the formula under normal conditions. However, clients can severely test the effectiveness of the preservatives by a combination of poor storage and application habits. The disadvantage of all the preservatives generally approved worldwide is their allergenic potential, especially for individuals with chronic skin barrier damages. As the percentage of individuals with compromised skin continually is on the rise, it is no wonder that the allergy rate also proportionally increases. This lecture was dedicated to the advancement of scientific research in the realm of corneotherapy and related sciences. We invite you to visit the International Association for Applied Corneotherapy webpage for further education. There are many specialist subject distance learning classes available from pastichetraining.com, 
and many articles to be read at beautymagonline.com. In addition, there are wonderful books and educational posters available from virtualbeauty.co.nz. I look forward to seeing you in my virtual classroom again very soon. Goodbye for now.